Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here, and I just want to briefly talk about a ship that I really, really love that many of you, I'm sure, might not have heard of. This is the BWS Intrepid from Wing Commander 4 The Price of Freedom, which is a classic PC space dogfighting game from the 90s. Certainly my favourite installation in the famous Wing Commander series. But this particular ship is a light carrier destroyer hybrid called uh, Durango class, and it's in service to the Union of Border Worlds. The ship was originally a mainline warship for the Terran Confederate. Federation, the main faction in Wing Commander, though it was rolled out of service a long time ago and has been kept around as a militia ship for the Border Union. This design has so many of the staple features that I really love in ship design. First of all, I want to talk about the massive forward braking thrusters. I love it in science fiction when a ship has forward retrograde braking thrusters that are similar in size to the main engines, not just monopropellants, RCS, but like proper braking drive cones. The best ever example of this is the stiletto from from Nexus the Jupiter incident, I think, which deserves a whole video of its own. But this ship does it too. It has the four main ones on the front of the prongs, and then it has the second ones on the port and starboard sides at the back. And I think that looks fantastic. It also has a through-deck hangar bay, which I think is the best way to do carriers in all of sci-fi. Uh, the whole flat top thing doesn't hold water in the concept of a spacecraft. There are more innovative ways to do it, but the through deck runway always looks amazing. It looks great on the Confederate Providence class from Star Wars. It looks great on almost every ship and wing commander. The Yorktown class for the Confederation has a big long through deck. And here it's a short one with two lanes and it's got the hangar areas on the port and starboard sides. And it's positioned below all of the command decks and everything through the center of the ship. This lends itself really nicely to the prong shape. Overall, this is a really simple design, this ship. There's not a lot of complicated nuance to it. It's not got too much egregious sticky out bits or unnecessary extras. It's just very simple and logical and grounded and I love it. Just to get into the specs briefly, there is no solid recorded length for this ship anywhere unfortunately, but most estimates place it around 500 meters long. That's using the length of the fighters to extrapolate etc. We do know the ship has eight dual mount laser turrets which can be used to effectively attack light warships but are most often used for point defense. It is rather strange that this ship is considered to be a hybrid destroyer light carrier. Overall, I think I would describe it as just a light carrier. It doesn't seem like it should realistically be used in an aggressive way against warships or stations or anything. Sure, maybe it could do some damage, but I think it would mostly just be getting itself killed trying to do anything like that. But to be fair, that could simply be a Union designation. They don't have as good ships or as many of them, so this old Terran light carrier is forced to serve in the role of a destroyer for them. The ship is jump capable. Uh, I can't find a specific number for its fighter complement, though uh, it's mostly considered to be light, I think, by most descriptions, maybe 20-30 fighters at most. The ship carries a bunch of different strike craft, including the Vindicator sort of medium fighter stroke light bomber hybrids, which are kind of like flying pickup trucks, as well as the larger Avenger torpedo bombers, and my favourite, the uh, Border Union Banshee class light fighter, which uh, sadly doesn't get nearly as much screen time as I think it should in Wing Commander. It's probably my favourite fighter design from the whole series. It looks really cool, has the big underslung guns, it's really manoeuvrable. This, incidentally, I do have proper specs for. The Banshee fighter is is 23.5 meters long with uh, 550 kilometers per second acceleration. The combined visual of the larger Intrepid and the smaller Banshee fighters just gives the Union this awesome visual style. They're quite clearly set apart from the Confederation. Sure, it's the same sort of tired trope of, of roguish space rebels, etc., but in this respect, it is done very, very well. Now, for those of you that don't know, Wing Commander 3 and 4 and also Wing Commander Prophecy have FMV full motion live action cutscenes, which actually starred Mark Hamill and John Reese. Davis and an amazing cast of big sci-fi names. They really are fantastic games. I'd recommend checking them out if you get a chance. But in Wing Commander 4, the budget was at its maximum and they could build a bunch of great sets. So we didn't just have green screen backgrounds. We actually got the full interior of the BWS Intrepid built with some really interesting stuff. We get to see the flight deck in full, which is nice. Plays host to a, uh, a great scene with some brilliant stunts and pyrotechnics where the uh, ship's under attack and fighters are exploding on the deck and such. And we get to see landed Confederation fighters that have been captured, being refueled and stuff like that. Really, really impressive scenes. Now, one thing we never actually see is the bridge of the BWS Intrepid because it's actually destroyed before we reach the ship in the narrative. And throughout the story, they command the ship from a secondary control center on the ops deck. That set looks pretty solid. The uh, the better parts of it are the briefing area and the uh, nice kind of display plot tables, very much kind of like the Yavin command center in Star Wars, stuff like that. But you do really become attached to this ship and endeared to the, uh, the setting as you go through. And I think perhaps even better than Wing Commander 3, they really put you in this cramped, very character-driven situation where the familiar
familiarity really bleeds through and you get very invested in the story as a result of that kind of design style and setting, which is really the best thing you can hope for. As hero ships go, this is a really good narrative tool, this ship. It's old and endearing and still reliable, but at the same time, it doesn't have enough sort of combat ability for you to not feel vulnerable in it. It's good to feel vulnerable in these kind of hero ships, especially within the setting of the uh, this particular game where you're on the run and you're the underdog. This ship definitely feels like it's success or defeat or survival is contingent on your performance as a fighter pilot. It lends itself very well to the role you're placed in in the game. A lot of the time it's hard to strike a balance between the sort of old reliable punching above its weight ship and the warship. Like if you're gonna have a carrier you can't really apply that same Serenity Millennium Falcon vibe to it very easily and I think this strikes the balance really well. Like uh, the Galactica is another example people are gonna cite but the Galactica can hold its own pretty well. It is a battle star. It can fight other warships more effectively. I think the Intrepid's inability to properly defend itself or attack other things without relying entirely on its strike complement fits the kind of tension and narrative pressure that it's trying to put on the player very, very well. It makes you feel like the linchpin in keeping this ship alive, which is great. That's pretty much it. If you want to know more about this ship, I'd strongly, strongly recommend that you play the Wing Commander series. The uh, third game is the best entry point for new players, I think. You can probably just play Wing Commander 3 and then Wing Commander 4, and that will be a complete experience without any... uh, Uh, shadow of a doubt. They're all on GOG.com for fairly cheap, I think, and Origin, they're on there. And if you are interested, we actually stream Wing Commander 3 on Wednesdays. We started last week as of the upload time of this video. That's uh, 8pm BST on twitch.tv slash spacedockhq. You can find a link in the description. If you join us on Wednesdays, we'll be uh, following the crew of the TCS Victory in Wing Commander 3 with John Rhys Davis and Mark Hamill and Malcolm McDowell and loads of other amazing sci-fi actors. And really, it really is a fantastic sci-fi world that often goes very underappreciated and I'd like to play the fourth one after we finish streaming the third one. So please do join us for that, and please check out Wing Commander, because it really deserves your attention. Thanks so much for listening. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Dock. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Dock schedule to see what's coming up.